All right, this is the uh, first of the kind of mini instructionals for Lab 5. I'm going to walk through each step in each environment. And so the first one we're going to be doing is adding an event theme and then a spatial join. Now the purpose of this, remember that we have bears, we have bear locations in a CSV file. And we need to make that CSV file into point features. Now we've done this before, but I want to go through it again. And then the next thing that I want to do is imagine that those that bear file doesn't have information about where, in what county the bears were found in. In other words, it has X and Y, but I want to get the points to have the attribute of the county that they fall inside. This is what we use a spatial join for, for point data. In other words, a point falls within a polygon. A polygon happens to be a given county, and we want to assign that county's name, that piece of attribute information, to the point. Now, in kind of structurally, this is in Model Builder. This would be the steps, and I'm going to go through it um, in terms of the actual tools, but I just want to lay it out. So what we have, again, is an XY data set in a CSV file. And the basic step, then, is to make, to use a tool called Make XY Event Layer. And remember, the XY Event Layer is a temporary file. So once we've created that, you'll notice that's here, that's the output. What we need to do then is make that temporary feature class permanent. And so again, that would be either in terms of kind of the normal workflow, we would simply export the data, or if we're going to do it in Model Builder, we're going to use the feature class to feature class. In other words, a temporary feature class to a permanent feature class. And I'm going to put that into my results geodatabase, and I'm going to call it bare points. Now, once I have the points, what I'm then going to use is a spatial join that takes the counties as polygons and assigns their name to the bare points. And now we will have an additional attribute field that is the county. So again, XY data point features are first thing. We're going to end up with this data that is in WGS 84, and we're going to work out of that. Okay, so here we are, and what we're going to be doing now is I'm going to be going through these steps, and they're fairly straightforward. I'm going to be doing them first in terms of the basic steps without using a model. And so again, our first step, right-click on our table. We're going to, have, of course, you've already added that. I'm going to select Display XY Data, and again, X and Y, and now, Right now, we have this coordinate system, and, and I know ha I happen to know that this data is WGS84, so I have to change that by clicking on Edit. And I'm going to come up here, and we're going to go into a geographic coordinate system, and into the world. Okay, so again, I'm right here, and scroll on down to WGS84. Now, if, if they had been collected in some other datum, I would certainly use that instead. So I'm going to click OK and OK. It'll give me the warning about the object ID field, and there are my bears. All right, so now we have our bear mortality locations, and what we need to do next, and again, I want to return to my model, is you'll notice that I've made my event layer, but the next thing I need to do is make that permanent. Before I do my spatial join, I need to make it permanent. Now, again, in a model builder, that's feature class to feature class. Here, it's really quite simple. Um, what I want to do is simply export them. The other thing I want to note, though, is I want to make sure that these are in projected coordinates. So what I'm going to do is, is look at the properties of my data frame. And you'll notice that I actually have this as projected, and it's USA contiguous Albers equal area. It's a good idea to have, again, I'm going to be doing some analysis, some spatial analysis, so I want this in projected units. So I'm going to set my data frame to the projection that I want. And then I'm going to go here, and I'm going to select Export Data. Essentially, it's the same tool as Feature Class to Feature Class. I select that, and I say I want it in the data frame. And again, I'm going to put this out to my results, and I'm going to call this one Bare Points. Now, again, notice that the data frame is what I'm using, so it's going to now be in that projected coordinate system. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to add that data. 
Now I can get rid of this one. I'm going to remove that. And now I'm ready for that next step, which is to assign the county information to my bare points. So again, this is the spatial join. I'm going to click on Arc Toolbox, and I'm going to go into my Analysis Tools and the Spatial Join tool. Click on that. Now, here's an important idea. I want to add information to the points. So they are the target. So I'm going to select that, my bare points. And then my join feature, that is what I want to get the information from, is going to be my counties. I'm going to select the counties generalized. And my output again, in this case, I'm going to put this back into my lab five results. And we are going to call this bear with county. Seems reasonable. And again, what you notice at the bottom is that all of the information at the beginning is that information from the target. If I go all the way down to the bottom, though, you'll notice I've got all this part of the information is from the counties. And I don't actually need all of it. And so I'm going to get rid of some of it. I'm going to get rid of the shape area, the shape length, the global ID, the URL. But I'm going to keep the FIPS code, the county ID, and the county. So again, you can determine what you want to bring in. I'm going to click OK. And you'll notice that it's going to run. It'll take just a moment. There's a lot of them there. But what I want to point out now is now when I look at the bare data, way out at the end, I have the counties listed, county ID and FIPS. So I've brought those two pieces of data together. All right, that's it for this one. We'll see you in the next.